So welcome back once again to my favourite time of the week when I get to sit down with your comments here on the Kermode Uncut site. number of themes running at the moment, starting off with Possession, the Andrzej Zuofsky movie, which was briefly outlawed as a video nasty in the 1980s, has just come out uh, on DVD in the UK. For my money, one of the strangest, most overlooked, really genuinely most bizarre films of its time. And it seems from your responses that you feel the same way. This, for example, is typical. This is from Howie. Thank you, Dr. K, for yet another good recommendation. I have to say Possession was completely and utterly insane. And other than having a few of my own half-baked theories as to what the movie was actually about, more of that in a minute, I am pretty lost in its madness. The creature effects were absolutely fantastic and impressively predated the incredible creature effects in The Thing, which I would closely link. As for the acting, I really don't know why people are giving Sam Neill's performance such a hard time. His wide-eyed, aggressive rocking in the wicker chair was both menacing and powerful, not to mention the numerous bouts of rage and spiralling madness. I mean, a couple of things to say there. The fabulous thing, if you've seen the, uh, the accompanying featurettes, is that Mr. Rambaldi, who did the creature effects, basically had to knock them together overnight from anything he could find. And when you find out what the creature's made of, it's really quite surprising. And on the subject of what possession is actually about, jealousy, rage, murder, madness, demonic possession, whatever, this, very concise, from Amber. On the interpretations, I'm pretty sure that Possession is pretty much just a film about divorce. Moving on to the subject of Black Swan, the new film by Darren Aronofsky, which I filmed an immediate reaction response to having come out of an LFF screening. I was quite stunned by the movie, and I used a phrase which has exercised many of you, which was like Dario Argento on crack, although, as we now know from a recent uh, health report, Dario Argento on alcohol would have been a lot worse. Um, here are some of your responses. This from Fluffles. This is the movie I've been waiting to see beyond all others since the trailer was aired. I was a newcomer to Aronofsky somehow, but after watching Requiem for a Dream, a film that affected me like no other, I have consumed his work. I just wish there was more of it. This uh, from uh, Colm O'Dwyer, who says, for me... Aronofsky is the one true great filmmaker of the past 15 years. It's a very big claim. Uh, obvious, uh, obviously, others I admire, but Aronofsky truly excites me. All his films offer something, and all are dramatically different. I mean, that's unarguable. Now, the fact that he will likely be directing Wolverine 2 fills me with joy. Could this be the glorious death knell of idiotic comic book films? Well... If you're excited about the, the uh, prospect of Darren Aronofsky and huge action getting together for Wolverine 2, can I advise you to go back, if you haven't done so already, and see their former collaboration, The Fountain. Now, I know that many people just hate The Fountain. It got bad reviews, and it was seen by very few people. But that film works for me. Here's the comparison. Many people saw and hated the George Clooney remake of Solaris, but I loved it. If you liked Solaris the George Clooney version, you might get The Fountain. But if after the first 15 minutes of The Fountain you're not on board, bail out, because it doesn't get any easier to like. And so, onto the subject of uh, Lost Gems and John Landis. Burke and Hare is now in cinemas, and I did a blog saying that I thought that Into the Night was the great overlooked John Landis film. Many, many responses from you. Here are just some of them. This is from Rasmus Wittengard. I discovered Into the Night as part of my thoroughly legitimate Michelle Pfeiffer fetish, that I was treated to a snide and entertaining thriller in addition to a fine performance by one of Hollywood's last stars of integrity was a fabulous bonus. This, however, offering a completely contrary view from Jeff J8. I hate to disagree with you, but I saw this movie in a theatre when it came out. The girl I saw it with and I agreed that it was boring while trying to be a comedy slash mystery slash action film. It fails on all three levels and has a completely illogical ending. Well, yeah, I mean, 2001's got a completely illogical ending. It doesn't mean it's not a masterpiece. Additionally, it somehow manages the unbelievable task of making Michelle Pfeiffer look less than stunning. The reviews at the time for this were rightfully very negative. The only thing somewhat interesting about the film is watching the cameos, which, as many of you have pointed out, include people like David Cronenberg. But there's so much more to like. So I want to finish on an upbeat note with this lovely comment from Stuart Hansen. Finally, Into the Night is recognised as a classic after the flab and excess of the Blues Brothers. And I'm with you on that. I mean, say what you like about the Blues Brothers. It is not an object lesson in economical storytelling. It is flabby and excessive. Um, this was a joy to behold. I love An American Werewolf in London, but Into the Night... 
along with Trading Places, which incidentally is also Nigel Floyd's favourite John Landis film, is the high watermark of John Landis's career. I love that film. I know some of you disagree with me, but clearly many of you are on board. And it made me think, let me know what you think are the great overlooked gems of recent cinema. Tell me here what you think are the films that have been missed.